absolutely dismantled by evil geniuses. 16-5 on this very map, so we know they can be good on it. But today, that's a big question mark. And for Enz, like, you know, Snappy and his Merry Men, it's a stomping grounds. It's a map that they're very, very comfortable on. It's a map where they've taken out some of the best teams in the world. And the fist bumps are coming out as well, Vince. And you know exactly what that means. We should be good to jump on Mirage in 10 seconds time. Enz will be taking the CT side and the South American combination over on the T's. Unfortunately, though, a match pause has come in. So we have a bit more time to discuss a few factors and features about these two teams. And I would agree, I think consistency has been an issue for 9Z, uh, 9Z, I should say. Um, I think Ents, it's quite safe to say consistency hasn't really been a problem for them for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So realistically, I think most people, myself included, are expecting them to just pick this up and it be business as usual. Yeah, for sure. And if I'm Ents, look, this, I mean, you can never take anyone for granted, obviously, but sure. for Ents, it's about you know, just making a statement where you're like, okay, we've got comparatively a, a much more easier matchup than maybe some of their compatriots in the top 10 would have had, but they're going to try and make sure that everything's clean and easy. They don't really make too many mistakes, make everything. Just go about it the way they usually do, right? Because obviously they will have uh, more sterner Opposition, uh, opposition to face on later on down the line here in the challenger stage. But right now, like you said, you know, players like Diha, he's been stand out for me. Spinks, obviously, as I pointed out, the MVP for this team, even the in the in the EU RMR as well. Uh, the bit of a question mark for me, and look, Hades has shown that he has what it takes, right? When when it comes to clutch situations with AWP, he has had those really big performances with the op against a pretty strong caliber of opposition. But as the star opper for this team, a team that is aiming, gunning to be a top team in the world, not just in the region, but in the world, I feel like he still hasn't found that level of consistency that one would be looking for. I would say right now, and I mean no disrespect on this, I think Hades is probably top end of tier two, maybe bre breaching into like tier one. And this is his opportunity. Moses, is that you? Oh, no, I, never mind. I, I thought it might be me for a second there, uh, especially with the aviators on yesterday. <laughs> um, in those intro videos, that at some point I'm sure you'll see at home. Uh, but I, I think for me, this is his chance to show the world that he's a tier one AWP, that he can go toe to toe with any AWP on the planet. We've seen Vitality come out hot, Zai Wu making a declaration of intent. I'm sure we're going to have some of the other monster AWPers in this tournament have their moments. Is Hades capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in the world? This is a tournament where we need to find out the answer to that question. And he did have a bit of a lackluster performance last Legend stage. They have to get there first, obviously. But for me, this match is almost like a yardstick. It's like a barometer of what kind of ends we're going to see coming into this tournament. If they start shaky, if this gets close, if they even lose, then I might start to worry a little bit for their mentality. I will say one thing, though, and I think he didn't get enough credit for this last major. Snappy was actually one of their best players performance-wise at mm -hmm. the last major. Even when they were getting mauled on maps like Nuke, he was there fragging. He was there having so much impact for his team. Yeah, that's the thing about Snappy, right? He's not really the, the hard-fragging IGL, but he will have that one map or yep. one series uh, pretty frequently, in fact, where he just pops off. And then it's like, okay, you have Snappy popping off. Then you have, on the other hand, Spinks being almost unkillable. You have Diha, and then you have Hades as well, not to forget Madden. And suddenly it's almost looking like a team who could take down Titans off the game. So definitely a, a really good point to bear in mind. But... Um, I have to say, I'm just going to put it out there. I, I genuinely feel that Ents losing this is almost unthinkable. Uh, like, there are a lot okay. of other matchups we have here today where there is an upset potential. And look, nothing against 9Z. They deserve to be here. They had to run that entire gauntlet, you know, battling it out in the Swiss system, having to win those five best of threes in a row to get here. And against a few other teams in this challenger stage, they definitely have a chance. In fact, I might even favor them in some of these matchups. Unfortunately for them, they're going up against Ents who... I really felt like it was kind of like, I wouldn't say fluky, but more like a, a little bit of a overperformance I saw in Pro League, for example. But then you see them in, R, in the RERMR just completely dismantle everyone. And it feels like the, the more time has passed for this team, the, the youngsters in the form of someone like in a Sphinx or Hades, they've, they've gotten more confident. They've gotten more, a little bit more autonomy in the team. Where Snipe is like, all right, 
you do what you want to do. I believe in you. I know what you guys are going to be doing. And I feel like that's made them an even more dangerous team. Because once upon a time, it was like the T-side, for example, was so heavily reliant on just calling just based off the spawn, right? Snipey's coming. All right, this is exactly what we're going to be doing over here. But if things don't pan out, then they start turtling up. They start looking a little lost, a little floundering, which is something which it seems like has gone away. It's a thing of the past right now for Ents. So we've talked quite a bit about Ents, and mainly that's because there's just way more data out there, especially at top level. They're playing consistently in some of the best European tournaments out there, as you can see on your screen. Speaking of which, if you want to get yourself across to the arena, you can see on your screen right now, you definitely should. It's going to be a great experience for everybody. Obviously, we're still trying to figure out which teams are even going to be taking part, and we think Ents probably will be in with the running. But if we switch attention over to the 9Z boys for a little bit, I think DGT is probably the player that stands out for me as being one of the heavy hitters, one of the big impactful fraggers over from Uruguay. Do you think he's going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the, the big players like Spinks? I mean, it's really hard to gauge, right? Obviously, you can only speak of the the opposition they've had, but DGT definitely was the was a star for this team as they were able to claw their way back from almost facing elimination in the RMR. The thing is, I, I've seen these guys in EU that played for quite a while. They had some some decent wins, right? Also had some pretty rough losses as well. The thing is, they can hold their own, right? And, and it seems like they have a pretty good system. The fact they're able to slot in two new players, replacing the IGL and the star player, and still be able to contend over here is so very impressive. And ironically, the star player try. He didn't even qualify with a double O nation lineup. So they, they do have quite a decent bit of depth. And obviously, they've played in EU as well. They have that little bit of experience going their way. So yes, it's going to be a real test. And at least based on the, oppo the, the opposition they've faced, it's going to be much more harder. It's going to be so much more harder for DGT to get some of those, those impact kills he gets. Or Lucan, for example, trying to make things work with the AWP. It's not going to be as easy as they've had against uh, you know, some of the South American sides. So yes, to answer your question, it's not going to be easy. Not even close. But then again, it's Mirage, and one thing we've seen on this map, Vince, even though the the favorites might be super comfortable on it, throw your mind back, go to the URMR, G2. They play Mirage first game against Anonymo, what happens? They lose an OT. Yeah. But, but that's also G2, so, you know. <laughs> and then they come to the Major, and they just completely maul Liquid, you know, as you do, just G2 things. Yeah, just lose an Anonymo and completely, absolutely destroy the North American hopes. Classic G2, classic Nico. <laughs> Meanwhile, in terms of the stats, and again, this is skewed, so I'm just mainly rattling this off while we wait for the players uh, to get themselves ready. It is 22 games played for Ents over the last three months. They have played this map a lot. It's been one of their main maps. 55% win rate, but obviously they have been playing against the biggest and the best the world has to offer. Yep. Meanwhile, 9Z, they've played it 11 times with a 73% win rate. Again, take those stats with a pinch of salt, but the point I'm trying to drive home here is that both teams have played Mirage more than any other maps in their pool. They are both very comfortable with this map. And I feel that's that's something which we saw in the RMRs as well, and uh, I saw some of the map videos where I was not very comfortable with which maps are being allowed through by the underdogs. Because, sure, you might be comfortable in Mirage, right? It's a map that you've, you've been playing a lot on, but then you're going up against a team who, you know, pound for pound are just a better team, uh, in all honesty. And you're going to going to be going up against them on their comfort map as well. So sure, you might be comfortable there, but maybe if you want to pull off the upset, you want to go for a little bit of a curveball being thrown in, right? So we saw many times, like Astralis and NIP, for example, two teams who, I guess you could say, are some of the best teams when it comes to Ancient. The, many of the best of ones, we saw the underdogs pick Ancient. They're like, yeah, we, we've studied the way you guys play this map, and we have an answer for you. But I'm like, sure, you might have an answer for that for a couple of you know executes or it's a couple of their plays, but they will have more depth. They'll have more comfort on that particular map. And that's what happened. Nip and Astralis, they ran away with, ran away with those series. And similarly, we might see Ents just, you know, just completely maul 9Z alive. Starting on the CD side, we know how asphyxiating their, def their defense can be. They're going to be pushing the extremities, going to be going for the aggressive mid plays and whatnot. Even 9Z, if they don't get off to a good start, the nerves start to come into play. Then they start getting their own heads. And listen, Mirage T side, I know this map has evolved over the years, one of the most unchanged, the only unchanged map since inception of CSGO till date. But even though it's evolved a lot, the T side sometimes it just comes down to that simple, go run in, get those headshots. And if you get into your own heads, things can just crumble for you. 
Well, we're one step closer to finding out what the result of this map will be because we're ready. We have all 10 players on. Madden has rejoined the server and it's ready to get into the action. Ents on the CT side are going to be kicking things off with a healthy dosage of utility. Some jewelies thrown in for good measure. And there is a kit for Madden as well. Meanwhile, on the other side, it's just full Glocks. It's full armor. It's full stand and deliver from 9Z. And Max is already making moves out onto the apps. No noise being made, but you can see the player towards Palace. That is DGT. Just looking around. And that gives me a clue that it is going to be the A pincer. The A hit coming in. Hades, he hears a lot of noise being made and rocks. He's going to be boosted up. Hades caught looking the wrong way, but he spins around and dispatches off rocks. Can't ask for more than that from Hades. Probably should have been a goner, but just makes the most of that. Slight lapse in judgment. And now he can go back in for more. David taking the initiative, trying to push down onto the connector side, but he is all alone. Top of mid is occupied by Lucan. And Hades, though, has a good idea as to what's coming up. 9Z, though, have been so passive on their approach that they haven't fully shown their hand just yet. And with 50 seconds left on the clock, they've got enough time to re-rotate. Hades in the right position, in the right spot, has dropped the bomb back down again. Two kills is where his round comes to an end, but he's done more than enough for the rest of his team. And now Sphinx, with a perfect angle, has put that to use. Two players Ooh. remain. Deha with a crisp one tap. Goes in for more. A lot of damage inflicted to him from Max and will be enough to finalize his life. For 30 seconds, he's about to become swelled down from CTs and Ents do claim first blood. I love how Snappy just running around with the dualies hoping to find something <laughs> and he just empties a few bullets into the corpse of Maxter. 9Z, the, the moment they lost the first kill, honestly, Hades should have been dead to rights, as you pointed out, right? But the moment they lost the first kill, they were just waiting for Ents to like show something and Ents to just they just held on to the ground. So you're like, all right, we have a great setup going here. We have a man advantage. There's no need to aggress right now. There's no need to, you know, try and push and try and find something. And 9Z, unfortunately, just getting taken down one after the other. And you can see already the early rifles coming out for the side offense. You know, it's going to be pretty much a full eco for the side of 9Z. No, no bomb getting planted, mind you. And it, indeed, it is the case. Glocks abound. Not a singular bit of utility being purchased as well. It is truly... The unicorn full eco fence. Never you're really gonna see that nowadays. Not really, not really. Okay. Okay. No investment put in in Sphinx okay. in the meanwhile. Alright. He doesn't he doesn't mind slaying a legendary creature. Straight through with the first frag. David though, where was that? Snappy's just been picked up with the clock. Not sure two kills, really? Glocks! Ents, guys, come on. This is where we, <laughs> we need to see the superior weaponry win out on this one or I'm going to lose my mind. I have no bias in this game at all, but like, come on now, guys. How does Snappy lose that 1v1 deal against a Glock? I, 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 that just... David's in, he's on 55 HP. That's mad. He must have just caught him in, in a weird angle or something. I, I can't imagine. Hopefully we get to see what happened there. Regardless, what it means is the Ents are in a bit of a shaky round that should never have been the case. This, look, if I'm 90, this is already a win. Yeah. Oh, no, they, I think you heard a footstep there. D here. Ready and waiting. It's going to clear the corner, though. That's a question. Barrel won't be spotted. It's going to slowly peel away. A lot of noise being made here by David. And it's going to be Sphinx. He will have no trouble dispatching of him. Rounds will be done here. 20 seconds on the clock, and simultaneously, everyone falls. Still a win for 9Z. You take away a couple of guns there, you're going to be very, very happy. And it's not, not just the weapons, right? You're losing the, you lose a Kevlar, you lose utility as well. I do have a little bit of a tech pause. It looks like Lucan having some connection issues, but he should be back hopefully very quickly. Lucan, also called El Toro down under. The bull. El, El Toro. El Toro. Like El Toro. The, the bull, you know, in Spanish. See. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. He can't be a bull in the server. Hasn't been so far. It's been two rounds, Vince. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure he's going to charge, and I suppose you don't want to get gored by a boar, so a <laughs> boar. Well, I suppose that's also true. I meant the bull. Quite different animals, like, but you know. <laughs> I would not want to be gored by either a yeah, boar or a bull. Very, very much the case. We'll say, though, as you, you did mention this, and I, I'm completely in agreement with you, they had pretty much full rifles in that last round ends to, to bring this back on track. And you can see the impact it's having on a couple of these players. Yep. $500 for Deha, 300 for Sphinx, 450 for Snappy. So you're 2-0 up right now on Ents. 9Z are going to have a buy categorically guaranteed. They're already buying AKs. This is a really 
really rocky round. If Ents lose this, they are flat out broke on multiple players, and 9Z are in such a good position. Absolutely, I do believe we have everyone back in the server as well. So there we go, much more shorter pause as Lucan's issues has been promptly fixed. As you said, the AK is going to come out here, Vince, and yeah, for Ents, because of the couple of casualties they suffered, which you really shouldn't have the previous round, this round gets even more uh, critical for them to win, right? Uh, and not just win, but just try and win convincingly. Because that's the thing with the CD side. You might have a streak of rounds, but if you keep hemorrhaging players, one or a couple of rounds just not going your way, and boom, you're broke, and it's going to be a great opportunity for your opponents to grind this one back. A bit of a default setup coming out here from 9Z. In the very first round, you can see already the aggression from Ents. Having control of ramp is going to be Madden. Speculative shots, nothing connects, but did spot a couple of players over on jungle and connector. And now Lucan is hiding down on the ramp. A bit of aggression from Madden. Now, aggression and Madden go hand in hand. This guy, if you tell him to go push, he will push and die for you. He is that kind of player. He's an absolute team player. Very aggressive. The ball is needed. But Lucan, there we go. We've seen the ball in action now. Takes off the head of Madden. Makes it look easy. And there's a second. He's charging straight in on the site all alone now that Sphinx has dealt the fatal blow, but it's going to be a B hit anyway. And they're catching some players in transition. Snappy relocates to the back of the site. Good first frag, keeping them honest, but a great counteractive kill from David. That should be the bomb plant. And considering that Lucan is still over on A, they're going to have to have eyes in the back of their head at some point here, Ents on this retake. To make matters worse, Max is pushed up close. He'll have to drop on Sphinx. And Diha may get one, but now his position is known. He has a smoke. He has no kit by his side. I believe one was dropped down on the side, though, which has now been picked up. And he's going to look to try and get in the diffuse of the smoke. But there's Max in the perfect position, primed to strike, and strike he shall. I like that attempt from Diha, though. He knew exactly where both the two T's were. He knew that David was still, sorry, Lucan was all the way towards A bomb site. He'd take a while for him to rotate, and he knew where Max was because that's where his teammate fell inside of apartments. But Max able to find him in the smoke. A crucial round being won, and Lucan, he took his name earlier, Vince, and he will call them alive, finding two crucial kills. Max as well being very proactive. I'm a little surprised that they weren't uh, aware of the potential of Diha coming in from uh, market, but still. No harm, no foul. They will get the job done, and that is going to be the first round on board very early for the South American side. And for Ents, they will have to go for a force of their own. Couple of A1s in play, a multitude of Deagles, majority of Deagles, in fact. And that means if you're Ents, and if you have a buy like this, you're going to try and maybe attempt something a little, a little sneaky, a little cheeky. And that is what 9 are waiting for. You can see how very passive they are, but they don't have any presence towards the uh, the A, you know, towards Pals or towards Ramp. But fortunately for them, Ents are not going to be poking and prodding in that direction. It's the kind of composition of weaponry where you can't really play stand. This is the problem, because at longer ranges, unless you land some crazy one digs, you are always going to come out second best against AK-47s as they found out first hand through on middle. Already middle has been lost at great cost of lives. And already Ents will be thinking, can we pull the plug in a way where potentially save these guns? And they have gone for a stack on B. So they could still feasibly be into a interesting position. Madness baiting him across. He needed to survive there. That would have allowed Snappy a little bit more leeway to deal with the eagle. And everything comes to an abrupt end. Keep in mind as well, not a single casualty on 9Z. That was a buy from Ents, mind you. That wasn't like a half buy. It was a full investment. But sure, it was three Deagles and a two A1s, but getting absolutely nothing done. And 9Z. All right, Vince. All right. Two and two. Tied things up. And as you said, as you correctly pointed out, casualties. They have some pretty solid money here, just having one, two back to back. And considering Ents will be in a full eco right now, it's a wonderful opportunity for, for their economy to blossom. Despite it being grim times right now for a worldwide economy, it's clearly not affecting 9Zs. Now, this, is a, this is a perfect spike in confidence if you're 9Z right now. You have all the options available. You know the Ents are in trouble. And this, of course, is a ripple effect from those two kills that we saw earlier from the Glocks. That's what came back around to haunt them. That's why they had two M4s as opposed to four or five of them. So all of these rounds, all of these plays add up, especially on the CT side. You're dead on, Blair, because it costs you so much more on the CT side to replenish all of your weapons and your utility and your kits and everything else. Eventually, you will get caught up if you're not careful, and that's what we've seen now. And still have all five players alive, and most of them are stacked over on this A side of the map. But it's just hard to see how any of this is 
feasibly going to work out for them, especially as the push is now coming in. Big match aside, he's going to get one, but that's all he will get from his endeavors. And now it's going to be a case of 19 just putting the final nails in the coffin. They should move 3-2 in the lead. And even though they're aware of the fact that it is just a pistol, it's going to be maybe a light investment or whatnot, they are being so methodical, right? That you're looking at the utility usage, you're looking at how they're ensuring they're no, they can't really get caught off guard. And it was a bit of a stack coming in actually from the CTs. You had three players there with the USPs. They didn't stand a chance in hell whatsoever. Clinical round coming out from 9Z, just a one casualty. And as we pointed out earlier, the money has blossomed. They're looking great right now. And for Enz, well, the buy is going to be coming in. But it, it is a bit of a an early little gentle tap on the face. It's like, hey, you can't take us lightly. You oh. can't take this easy. And 9Z would have thought of it. They have forced Enz to take the first tactical timeout before the South Americans did. And they do. It's still early days. It's still yes. very early yeah. days. But they do have the lead. But we said this in the pregame, Blair. We said, do not take 9Z lightly. Because you will get stung by these guys. These guys are legit. Yes, it's early days, but Ents a team that many people... I even saw many people putting them as 3-0 as their pick'ems. They are already in a bit of an awkward spot. Meanwhile, on stream A, it's 9-8 to Outsiders, who were 0-3 behind at the start of that game. Got a chance to catch the first few rounds. So Outsiders just slightly ahead of their Brazilian counterparts for now. We'll see how that game ends. Obviously, we're keeping on track with the stream with some early aggression for Dika through on underpass. And David watching the top with two of his compadres as they're anticipating that maybe the action's about to get serious in just a few moments' time. The mid play coming in, and the flashes are so good. Spins down, and will find one looking for the second. The spray, it deals so much damage on the David, but not quite able to finish off the job. The trades are still back and forth. I'm not too sure why David dropped down from the chair position, but he will be punished for it. But Lucan is there, and Lucan will take down Spinks. So now. 3v3. All three players still pretty healthy overall on both the sides. But the smoke dissipates. Luke is going to be in a rough spot. Never mind. Diha will come out on top. They're barely getting scratched. And the final two members, DGT and Rock, slowly making their way towards the B bomb side. Snappy, the anchor, he's lying in wait. And backup? Is it going to arrive as a question? No, it looks like Madden's going to be making his way towards the A bomb site. And Snappy, he's going to get his next snap by Rocks. Molotov deployed as well as the bomb. He's going to try and get it planted, but Madden will find DGT, leaving it on Rocks to clutch this one out. 10 HP up against 100. Madden, the new recruit who's been in for a while now, of course. Tenyard has to try and clutch this, but loses his head. And the yeah. South Americans go from strength to strength. That's four rounds in a row. Two kills from Rock Spins, two kills, but how crucial were those? First, he spins around and destroys Snappy, and so very low in health he was at the very end, but still able to pluck the head off Madden. Actually, make the three kills. This, this shot, though, he just reads it to perfection. The shadow was a giveaway as well. And yeah, 9Z, they're going to celebrate every kill. They're going to celebrate every round being won here. In what some people would say would be perhaps the, I said it, one of the most lopsided matches we have here, at least in the B stream. And it is looking like 9Z are more than capable of putting up a fight here. Max and Spinks passing by one oh another my. through the smoke. Snappy takes the first with the eagle. Won't be a second, but a lot of damage done. And now Spinks shows his hand. AK-47 picked up in the process. Does have Templar as well, so aim punch won't be a problem. Hayden's is one on one as well, and now Rox falls on the side as Spinks doubles up with his AK. And Entz keep themselves close here, Blair. They will not be taken over. Bit of a yikes there from 9Z. Just the Deagles there, but Spinks, right, hiding in the smoke. I was wondering, I'm like, all right, who's going to see who first? And unfortunately, I do believe it was Lucan towards short, I guess? But whoever it was, he was looking the wrong way. Spinks gets the kill, and the moment you give an AK-47s, you put that gun in the hands of Sphinx, you know things are going to get a little bit grim. And so, they're going to be pretty happy with the way that particular round played out, or this should have been actually potentially a 5-2 for the side of 9Z, but the guns will be in the hands of X. And Diha from underpass, he's not going to be traded. He's not going to be traded, he's just going to get out of there with murder, finds David, and there's a man advantage early for Enz. I think they were nervous that Hades might peek out of connection. It was like a ruse, like a bait and switch. One switch just gets to kill pieces out of their scot-free. And now, with a player 
advantage. Ents looking to go from strength to strength. It should be mentioned as well, by the way, the Sphinx is on 11 frags after picking up three in that last game. Head and shoulders above the rest of his teammates. This has been the case so many times, though. He is such a great player. And speak of the man, he will deliver. DGT hasn't quite had the impact we were expecting, and he won't in this round even. It's looking like this is just going to be a case of closing the casket on the head of 9Z as Lucan is last man standing, AWP in hand, may even have half a mind to try and pull back and save this, considering the economic situation is pretty dire. But do you think Ents are going to let them? Hell no. D has already moving up alongside Sphinx. The problem here, though, is that Ents, although their economy is building nicely, Hades is still pretty low, so they can't afford to lose too many weapons here on their engagement. Yeah, H Hades isn't going to be going for the hunt, right? But Lucan, because of how much time is still remaining here for... Ends to work with, yeah, they're going to be going in for the hunt, slowly wrapping around. Snappy, he's, they're making a lot of noise here, and Luke and all, he's just scopes at the worst time possible, and the fast scope, unfortunately, not even able to rattle off a bullet. But that round was a perfect example of why Sphinx is such a goddamn good player. Yeah. Finding the player towards the bench, he read it, he just waits patiently. First he's here getting this kill and just escaping his ludicrous. He reads DGT like a book, and then goes for the spray and finishes off with a clean little 3k there onto Lucan. And he's 14 and 4, despite things being so very close in the server. The guy is phenomenal. Sphinx is like that perfect example of a player with phenomenal crosshair placement. As Max has gone in for the hero AK purchase, rest of his teammates are happy to sit by. Is that a misbar? Yeah, I, I mean, if he makes it work, if he gets an entry or so, it could be very much worth it. Madden, though, after a flashed up, Max is going to go looking, but Max does decapitate him. Now can push in. Maybe a second kill could be forthcoming after all. David's been completely destroyed down to 17 HP, but he's not the main player. The main star in this round was Max, but not for much longer. And now Hades is okay. cleaning up. The mop and brush is out, and he just forces them all away. There won't be a bomb plant. The bomb is spilled out of the ramp. And the rest of the players are about to just get cleaned up and thrown out with the trash. This round is a done deal. Well played from Hades, though. Looked a little scary. Looked, looked a slight little scary there, especially when Madden gets taken down. But yeah, I do wonder if the misfire is going to be coming back and uh, haunting them a little bit because uh, the money... It's not terrible. They're going to be able to eke out a buy. But Hades, yeah, immediately he pounces on the main members. A little bit of overkill, considering they didn't have any armor and just the blocks there, but ensuring that the AK-47 doesn't get any more kills in its name. And there we go. Max, unfortunately, because the Dubai will have to make do just for the Deagle. He's got a little bit of utility, however, to help his teammates out. It's going to be a much more faster play here coming in towards the A bomb site. And look at Ensto, aggressive posturing towards ramp. GT could be the task though, but he needed his teammates to have more impact out of Palace because it doesn't force Madden's attention elsewhere. If they die from Palace, Madden probably looks towards the side, he gets the backstab. Not the case, and this round has come crumbling down. 9Z went from a really good spot of momentum to now back into the slums, and it's only Max that's left alive, and of course, with his previous buy, down to a eagle, no rifles. Not that it necessarily would have made any difference to his prospects of winning that round, but Ents have just done a phenomenal job of steadying themselves now. I'm just steadying, Ents, that, that, that economy is... It just blossomed, right? Considering how close it was and how they were, they were trying to just create the bottom of the barrel to eat out a few buys earlier on. Right now, they can pretty much go for full-fledged buys back to back to back. And yeah, as you said, 9Z, the little bit of momentum they had has come to a screeching halt right now. And that's the thing with Ents, like that they're... It's, it's not too extreme, it's not as Furia-esque, the, the CD side, but you will see them just go for these, you know, aggressive plays, pushing the extremities of the map, getting map control early on. And that's something which, uh, unless you have a very solid uh, protocol and read of what they're doing, you, you can just completely wreck you. As David getting ahead of the smoke, trying to find something, but it's all the ruse while his remaining members slowly sneaked away towards the A bomb site. But they're walking into the walking headshot machine that thinks Madden as he will easily pick up a few kills of his own. And David, they knew where he was earlier, and his days are numbered. They have been 
capitalized on and cashed out as he will find himself on the receiving end of that final death. Tactical pause called from 9Z. Makes perfect sense. They've lost the last five rounds in a row for, let's be honest, minimal amounts of kills. To put that in perspective, actually, they've won four rounds, but you've got Spinks who's only died four times, Baden's only died five times, D has only died five times. That tells you something right there. That is why the funds are so vast. Everybody, barring Spinks, is over $10,000 even after a full purchase. Ents will be golden to buy at least two more rounds with everything they could possibly want. Simply put, 9Z, if they want to get a good half here, they're going to have to battle against consistent buys. Ents are going to give them nothing for free. Yeah, like four players over. Sorry. Uh, you know what? I'm going to count Sphinx as well. 9,500 is like basically 10k. Like five players over 10k. Especially at this juncture of the game, as you said, it's not going to be easy. Every single round is going to be an uphill task. Snappy. Falling down towards underpass, but that's okay. Because no one is there. Once more, it's going to be 9Z trying to go for this A play. This time, though, with a little bit more utility to work with. And fortunately for them, they won't have to contend with any CDs playing aggressively. But, and look at Deha just looking to fight them out in the open. And he will be punished for that. And that could cost them the round. They need a big play. Max just burnt himself alive, I assume. He ran through his own Molotov while flashed. I'm not sure what happened there. But we'll have to just keep on pace with the action because it's back and forth engaged and back and forth grabs. Lucan and David. And now Stappy comes back up to the plate. Two on two. Lucan is down at 42 HP. The bomb's in such an awkward position though. And Hades has his eyes on it. He knows. He knows they have to peek into his crosshair. This round should be done. Hades misses his chance though and gets punished. And now it's down to the brains behind the operation to flex his brawn. Snappy slowly peering and protruding round the connector side. David looking to try and retrieve that bomb up in that very awkward spot. May have to make noise on his way down, but Snappy won't be able to hear it because he silently dropped back down. 35 seconds. As far as Snappy's concerned, this could be a rotation over on the B side. He's kind of rotated himself off. That's exactly what he was anticipating. And David, with just ice running through his veins, goes back to A and will have the plant momentarily, just making sure that all these angles are covered. Making sure he's going to get the free plant down. Indeed, he will now. And Snappy, on the other side of the world, is going to have to start to rotate back in. Snappy. Just overthinking things. It's going to be making his way to a CD spawn, though. And David, Snappy's just going to be legging. He's just going to be running. And David, he hears this. He hears this. He's just going to play the bomb. He's going to play the time. He's not going to face Snappy. He's not going to show anything. And Snappy, he's going to spawn trying to cross on over. But David will spot him. See the shadow first. Well played from David there. Composure. As he said, ice running through his veins. And a very, very crucial round to win for 9Z. Because honestly, Vince, I won't lie. It felt like Enzo just going to be running away with this half and maybe making it like a 11-4 scoreline. But a huge clutch being won. A bit of an overextension there, honestly, from Diha, in all honesty. But then it was kind of countered with the fact that Max burnt alive. So. Yeah, we just saw that as well. It was a flash and there was a Molotov just outside the ramp. He's kind of unfortunate. And I a team flash too. That one. Yeah, he was fully blinded. So, unfortunately, these things happen. Now Max pushing straight down with the Mac 10 And after a disappointing defeat, have to try and come back out from the embers the other side. And that's exactly what they're doing. Spinks and Diha putting down the pain and suffering with the A1Ss. Diha smoked off on connector, could open up a little bit of whistle room for the plant, but Hades is there on the CT side with the AWP. And now he's got some backup in the form of Snappy. Although he goes down, Snappy is that second player up, and he has crossed to the left-hand side of the boxes from the T's perspective. This is such a good angle, such a good position which you expect him to make the most of, and he does just that. Bomb drop, rocks may be unknown right now, but not for much longer. That was labored, Diha nearly whiffed it, but he still got the kill and Entz bounced right back into winning ways. 8-5 to five, penultimate round here of the first half. And as we mentioned earlier, it's like, you know, money is not a problem for Entz at all, right? Like, even though they lost the previous round, able to go for the full-fledged buy, a good hole coming out as well, a little bit of aggression towards mid. Catching some of the players off guard, as you pointed out, snappy there, just find the perfect timing there to cross over towards uh, the ticket booth and Lucan had no clue whatsoever. And uh, 
It's a, it's a bit of a light pur purchase coming in. Uh, DGT may be investing a little bit more, perhaps. It, still leaving a little bit in the coffer. And it's going to be running in onto the bomb site, right? Just following the smoke, just waiting a second before the smoke blooms. And they will actually get the bomb down here. And things can suddenly get a little messy. Biha able to, however, find rocks, but the bomb will be planted. And that's a little bit of money in the bank and a kill for David. Oh, there's a small gap in that smoke, but another one's been put in that allows David to pick up the AK. Grenade is good damage, and the follow-up is there on Spinks. They feel claustrophobic right now, 9 said, because they've got such low firepower and no utility, they feel like they have to push out. They have to try and take control over this round. DGT with even trade back and forth from Hades, but now Luke is getting aggressive with the Deagle. His back is open though to CT, and he will get swarmed. Snappy and Spinks lock it down close. Very close to doing enough, mind Z. There was only a few seconds to spare on that defuse, but Ents get the job done all the same. Yeah, for 9Z, that was up about trying to get the bomb down, maybe inflict a little bit of damage, perhaps, although it would have been, like, nothing, in all honesty, considering Ents had so much money to work with. But now, heading to the final round here, they have everything, apart from maybe the kitchen sink in their arsenal, to, to deploy, to try and get to round number six here. Up in the hands of Lucan. The AK-47s haven't really seen the op to, out too often, in fact, for 9Z here on the T-side. And in the meantime, for Ents, is the double zoom bangers. Hades and Snappy. And Hades taking a bit of damage, standing in the flames, looking to find a kill. But he'll find nothing. As 9Z just going for the defaults, waiting for any aggression to come out from the CTs. You can see three players up towards top mid. We have Rox just waiting towards... Uh, the B apartments for a potential push, but if you look at Snappy's positioning with the AWB, he's pushing pretty deep towards apartments, Vince. That's going to allow them to allocate the majority of the resources towards mid and towards the A bomb site. Yeah, that's a good point. They can definitely poke and probe with this real estate that they picked up themselves. Flashes out. David is the first player to push. They have underpass as well where rocks can come in. We have seen a couple of attempts at boosting into window, but they typically have backfired on 9Z, so I'm curious if they're gonna try and pick that one up again. Spinks over on Catwalk, who's been a consistent threat and thorn in the side. The fact is, the man is on 21 and five, and we haven't even finished this half yet. That is outrageous by anybody's standards. Now with a molly perfectly placed, David is isolated from his teammates. Time's starting to dwindle away a little bit. There's plenty of utility still on the side of the South Americans, but they need to get in position to use this. And in doing so now, they're walking into the crosshair. The Piha sprays the one, anticipating a second play, but Rox does counteract. That's allowing them a little bit of safe passage up on the connector side. Madden in a bit of an awkward spot. He's Time. got players on connector, players on ramp. Time itself is ticking away from 9Z. They've got to start pressing W. They've got to start putting down some pressure. And Hades will retort in kind with his AWP. Madden goes down on the side. DGT and Luke can both pick up big frags, but his Sphinx, five seconds to play with. Spray is good, but he dies just in time, and 9Z pick up a 9-6 deficit going through to the second half. If Spinks gets a second kill, he just gets a hell out of dodge and the round's done. They lose to the time, but somehow 9Z... Ooh, boy. That was, uh, that was a bit of a butt clench of a round there, Vince. That was puckered up, but they managed to make it work. They managed to make it work. And if you're NC, look, it's still 9-6. It's still a fantastic half of them. Uh, but a couple of rounds maybe could have been a little bit cleaner. Maybe they could have closed it out in a much more convincing fashion. I, I, I really felt Hades' position there towards Pouch and AWP. There was no way they were be checking it. I thought it would probably be kind of like the, the trump card, right? The uh, the contingency. But instead, he goes off to take the fight. He finds the one kill. But once his position is known, they hunt him down, they take him down. Great round overall from 9Z. And considering how Ents were just mounting this, I wouldn't say even say a comeback, but going on the streak, the fact they're able to bring it down to 9 and 6, fantastic job from the South Americans. But here we go. Now's the real test, because Ents' T side and Mirage can be devastating. Yeah, the T-side of Mirage is very interesting. You can be very free-flowing on that. And I wonder if when they're confined and constricted a bit more, if 9Z are going to struggle. We'll have to wait and find out. What we do know is that Sphinx is on a heater. But continue. Oh, David has multiple chances. Oh. Take one of them. And that's left Max out of dry on the end of a fishing rod. 
completely baited. David gets one finally, but it's at the cost of multiple of his teammates. And that could very well just be the final nail being put in. However, he's now going to stand his ground. And as long as he's alive on CT boxes, it allows his teammates to push out through connector and behind him as well. Down he will fall, but DGT is straight back into the action. Two on two, post plant already. Half of that fuse has ticked away. They need to get on this side, but Snappy and Sphinx, tag team in tandem, put down the bullets to faces and Ents get the second pistol. Oh, David. Oh, David, I hate to say it, but like, we've been there, Ents. We've all been there. The best in the world. Simple has been there as well. <laughs> you, you're looking at someone from behind. You're like, yeah, I got this guy, but it's a USP at the base of the skull and you just whip everything. He does, like you said, manage to kind of redeem himself finding a couple of kills, but honestly, if he gets a kill, Madden gets stopped in his tracks, right? And considering how close it was, it came down to 2v2 right there with Snappy and Spinks winning, at, winning it. They could have easily swung the way of 9z, so they might be ruining that fact. Um, haven't really gone for the force spy, though. Uh, that's a bit curious and uh, hmm, interesting. Honestly, watching Dave start that round hold that for a moment because I thought Max was about to pull out something truly spectacular. And now Snappy in the connector. Has a right idea, slightly off of the timing. Fortunately for Ethan, they have assumed he was going in for that reload, and DGT will punish Snappy. It's only a Mac 10 down, though, but alongside Madden, it's a 2 on 3. 16 HP onto Diha, and Rox has now picked up a Mac 10. This round could still prove to be fairly costly on the side of Ents. Rox now quickly rotating into the window, and a second rotational player, DGT, threw on T spawn. All about rocks keeping them busy. This is all about DGT. How many exit frags can he pick up? In terms of the round, that's already over. They don't have a kit. Even if they wanted to get on the side, it doesn't make a difference. Ents are winning this round. It's about whether DGT can capitalize and cash out and pick up one of these rifles. That's the main part of this round. The answer is a resounding no. Sphinx is not playing his game. In comes rocks to die to the bomb. Good night. No, I was going to get a gun anyway. It's fine. <laughs> For 9C, that, that, that was pretty much a full eco, right? We had we had a couple of the deagles being invested, so they're pretty happy with that for Ents. You know, it's just suffering a few casualties. But that's okay. AKs will still be picked up by, well, at least the majority of the players. There we go, Snappy with the 47 of his own. The Hunt Spinks gonna stick around with the Galils. 24 and that's a 4KD. He's not messing around here, Black. He's you know, he sung his praises and he's he, thrown his one. His, consistently, his, his consistent output, like the, the huge output he has, it's it boggles your mind because, you know, especially for some such an up-and-comer, yeah, you have some great games. Then you kind of dip a little bit, you have an average game. This kid just seems to consistently just pop heads at Will Lucan, though. Nice little cheeky little one-way they're able to find Madden. And it's an early opening frag for 9Z, something they're going to need quite a lot henceforth. I think Sphinx has only died the same amount of times as I've seen him on rounds. That's something when he dies, they typically fall down. Rox now, very awkward, very labored. He needs to go nuclear, and instead it was more of a puff of smoke. Only one kill. Here comes the rotational play, but Snappy may be overzealous. Maybe he needed to wait for his teammates to push out onto the site. So all things considered, Ents find themselves a player behind. They are at a disadvantage, but it's their two heavy hitters. It's Hades and Sphinx. And Sphinx right now basically counts for five players on himself. As we'll show here, as long as David doesn't put a bullet between his eyes, which he has. Ooh. Hades keeping this round alive, but there's Lucan as well. Great retake from 9Z, and they will be picking up their seventh. <laughs> that little tap from Hades, that was filth, though. I guess it jinxed us, Sphinx a little bit there, Vince, but it looked like it was going to happen. It looked like it looked like it was indeed going to transpire, but a very important round being won by 9Z again. However, their, uh, their money is not exactly in a great position, right? Losing so many members, of course, they will still be able to eke out a pretty solid buy overall. But if I'm Ents right now, 11 to 7, it's not that big a lead. So I wouldn't really fault them for going for a force right now, just trying to smash the economy of 9Zs and just you know run away with this uh, with this game, make it 13-7, whatnot. And indeed, that looks like what the play is going to be. If it doesn't quite pan out, though, golden opportunity for 9Z to get closer to double digits. 11-10, like, depending on how this round plays out, you know, 11-9, a distinct possibility for the South Americans. And who would have thought of it? Like, 9Z versus Ents, and this is the closest matchup we've had thus far in the B stream? In fact, I don't think any of the games we've had today 
on both streams have gone to double digits for the losing side. Uh, the only game was our first game, Bad News Eagles. Yeah, against... apart from the first game, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. As, since then, it's been pretty, pretty one sided, absolutely. You've had some very surprising results, some not so surprising. But if 9Z can pull out this victory, this would prove to be pretty huge. We may have a return performance from that Eternal Fire Bad News Eagles game over on Dust 12. Very first game of the Major here on the B stream. Meanwhile, a bit of a slower, lackadaisical approach. They have top middle control, but no players in underpass. They can't go in for that double pronged attack. Meanwhile, only Madden over on the A side of the map, but he's playing more on the ramp to stop for any rotational plays. This does mean the palace is uncontested, and that may be something that starts to irk in the back of his mind. They're very convinced that 9Z aren't going to be being very adventurous, and that indeed is the case right now. You can see they're playing some very defaultish setups. We have Max playing towards a Sandwich, tucked into the corner. We have his teammate towards Tollwood, just jumping around, hoping to find something. And here comes the Pounce. Snappy's going to be the one leading charge with a Tech 9. Max hasn't been seen yet, and they can easily find one. But no, Snappy finds Max. That's huge. No bomb's going to be planted. And remember, they have the guns to work with here. And this retake, it is definitely on, but ends they're being so very disruptive. Especially as David was so wrecked on the CT boxes with the Molotov, he had to pull the plug down to 24 HP. That smoke is going to start to clear now, but it's still five players on Ents. It's a save. I honestly think the save is the correct call here. You look at the economy for 9Z, they can't afford to throw these weapons away. And realistically, against a team of, of Ents' caliber, how often, what percentage would you normally get a success on will retake 3v5, like 1% max? This is absolutely the correct decision. And, and it's, that's why like defenses like there, where he's like super total up on the bomb side, and you're not really having much control towards mid. You have no eyes towards mid. You have no control towards, let's say, for example, the apartments. Meaning you can't allocate more resources. Look, it's okay to be total up on a bomb site if you have more members there, like good crossfires being set up. But if you're going to allow so much room for ends to work with, they have the right protocols. The scaling was perfection there. Snappy with the Tech 9 leading the way with the C4 and everyone grouping up together. They knew which angles to watch, which angles to clear, which angles they didn't have to worry about because of the utility being deployed. And you allow that to team like Ents, your, your defense is going to crumble. And that's exactly what transpired over here on the A bomb site. The moment they lost Max and the smokes are deployed, Rallon's pretty much done right there. And they, if they would thrown their bodies at the retake, they would have had nothing to work with. So it was the right call coming in from 9Z to go for the for the save there. And because of that, they got a couple of, you know, a FAMAS and an MP9 to work with. They still have the three rifles to wheel, but the utility is so poor for the CD side. And Ents have had no issues with taking their time on these rounds, which means that you're prolonging the round, making more of those smokes that a little bit more valuable. Oh Snappy gets two, a nade into connector, blowing it to pieces, and then takes the head of mid. DGT falls the same way, and this being a force up on 9Z leaves them with very little to play with afterwards. The save doesn't seem to have done them any good whatsoever. Rocks alive with David, isolated from one another, although they may have the same idea again to try and pull the plug and save these two weapons i'm not sure they'll be afforded that luxury and madden aggressively through the backside on ct nullifying david and entirely denying his weaponry rox has picked up an m4 but he's on the market and i feel like he may not be long for this world blair because there's still plenty of that fuse left on the bomb he may be getting hunted down it looked like they were going to be wrapping around here, but they slowed things down. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's Spinx. Matt, Spinx is... Uh, he's unreal. He, he's actually so stupidly good. Where I'm like, like, it's unreasonable. I know, like, you know, the desk usually talks about most of the A-Stream games, because obviously there's so much you can cover in given the amount of time, but... I would love them to maybe, you know, I don't know, like, to take a look at how Sphinx has been playing. Because he's been standout amongst all the games we've had this far, right? Just so clinically, like, not just mechanically, but he just seems to have a very good read on how to approach the game. He makes his kills even easier for himself. Right now, what should be an easy round for uh, is, of course, for Ents, considering the fact that it is going to be just the pistols. Maybe a couple of upgraded, you know, Peter Fitties, a uh, couple of Deeks. That's about it for 9Z. A great opportunity for Ents to get to 14. He's the standout player for me so far of the day on the B Street. Absolutely. I mean, Dexter and Patsy got pretty close, but the, the nature in which he's been playing here, the amount of agency that he's had, and additionally, something that very few players can do, he didn't just have 
a one half wonder where he played amazing on one half and picked up like one kill on the second. He's consistently been performing over both of these halves so far. He's been the, the heavy fragger, the guy that's been leading the charge. He's been playing aggressive, passively, whatever you need him to do. And now 9z in this round, as we're glossing over the start of it, it's because they simply put out very few weapons. They're mainly stacking on the A side of the map. Four players over here, they've already lost David. What does come back to one that speaks now? Death from above. Just three shy of his 30 bomb. And Lucan, the last man standing, the player that was occupying the B site, is forever alone in this situation. It's looking very good for Ents to get that 14 7 lead. And I don't want to write 9 Z off because I think that they have played pretty decently today. But this just feels like it's a bridge too far. Yeah, I, I really feel like on the, on the T side, they, they showed. They showed some some pretty solid signs, right? Yeah. They were able to counter a couple of things and uh, had up their sleeves. And even in certain disadvantageous positions, they're able to turn things around. And especially against a team like Ents, that is very commendable. But the CD side thus far has been uh, a bit flat for me. And, and look, again, I don't want to harp on it too much. Again, for 9Z, they are the underdogs heading into one of the actual dark horses of this event. Like Everyone's expecting Ents to, like at the bare minimum, make it to the legend stage. And some people are like, yeah, they might make it top four. They could actually potentially, given how things pan out, maybe, maybe even make it to the final. So that's a team that are going up against. And for 9Z, uh, yeah, the, the CD side, it, it was going to be rough. Because again, we got to go back to what we alluded to in the beginning of this game during the pre-map segment. We were talking about how Mirage is an absolute comfort map for Ends. Yeah. CD side, T side, doesn't matter. It's supremely comfortable on. And you can see over here on T side, they, they, they have the right game plan. They know exactly what they want to do. The protocols are solid. And unfortunately for 9Z, from what I've seen from them thus far, they're giving just too much room to Ends. And that is something you can't afford to do. It feels like too much respect. Like, yeah. I, I think they may have gone into their shells a little bit. They started the T side very aggressively, like almost no respect mode. And that was working so well for them. Now it feels like they've retreated into their shells. You can also say, though, on the other side of the coin, that maybe Ents have just gone from strength to strength. They've been playing very solid Counter-Strike, regardless of how 9Z has been performing. But I would like to see them you know, go out on their own turn, try something audacious, try something aggressive, try and take Ents out of their element, their comfort zone, because Ents, simply put, are too good. You're not going to break them down through doing defaults and the standard stuff. If that was going to work, it would have worked five rounds ago. It hasn't been working. It's time for something different. I'm actually a bit surprised, to be honest, Blair, that we didn't see a tactical timeout deployed here before this round, considering how important it is. That's true. That That is very true. And again, oh, we forgot to mention this, though. We are talking about this for Imperial and uh, their opponents early in the previous game. But 9Z as well, they don't have the coach behind them, right? Zach, he's a veteran in the scene. Uh, many people might remember him coaching that Immortals lineup with Henny and Lucas in that lineup. And he's not there right now standing behind them. And that could be such a key factor, right? When you need an extra pair of eyes, when you need a veteran behind you, a coach behind you, to maybe fix a couple of things. Maybe he spotted a couple of holes in the defense and he's not there. It's You're going to be missing it so much. 35 seconds left and Enter starting to force their will and explode out onto the site. And explosives have been planted through the smoke. Sphinx nullifies Lucan. Diha onto DGT and the pieces of the puzzle are falling into place. Snappy puts it down to just rocks. Three players to find and frag and he will stumble, trip and fall. Sphinx one shy of his 30 and Ents one shy of their first victory at the Major. I just heard him say, I think we can just do ends the default now. <laughs> oh, I love player comms, man. Especially, especially you know, when, when they start trash talking a little bit. Maybe not right now, because most of the games have been kind of, you know, one-sided and everyone's being much more uh, reserved. But as things get more heated up as we enter, you know, the 2-0 matchups, the 2-1 matchups, that's when things get absolutely fun to not just watch but listen in as well. Right now, the ends one away. And as you pointed out, Sphinx, I wanted to get a 30 bomb. I feel like he deserves it. Like, he definitely should get a 30 bomb. And he actually might, David. Oh, he's going to be standing on top of the flower pot, waiting, biding his time. Sphinx is all by his lonesome. And one thing he won't do is he's not going to go for this hero play. He doesn't go for those solo plays, getting a, you know, getting that blood loss, allowing him to blind him. And that's why he is such a dangerous player. Lack of utility now, though, for the CTs. A smoke on the hands of Lucan. And he, of course, is one of the B players. So A site, maybe more aggressive positioning. Max David down on ramp. David off angle, hoping for the best. There's only one player there for Ents, and that is Sphinx. So be careful what you wish for. Diha elsewhere on the map, has put down rocks over on the B side. 
and now he can push out alone. He's a one-man wrecking crew. He's trying to draw away rotations, but 9Z, to their credit, are not biting down on this. Spicks now going in for one. He's got his 30, but he will be shut down afterwards. And DGT and Max, last two players standing, have at least posted up one before DGT is wiped clean. Max has got two more players to find and frag, but I think he's going to get caught from the back, and there is Madden. 16-7 will be the win, and it was indeed easy for Ents at the end. It was very, very easy for Ents, Vince. And yeah, like all the games we've had thus far, like you, you look at some of the matchups we had, we had like teams like, you know, Liquid going up against G2 and whatnot, and we thought, okay, maybe we would have had some closer affairs. But apart from the first game we've had thus far, which was between Bad News uh, Eagles and Eternal Fire, which went, you know, all the way to 30 rounds, everything has been so one-sided. And I feel like for the majority of the well, the favorite, so to speak, they have kind of delivered here. Ents especially. What a showing coming out from them. Again, uh, you know, shout out to 9Z. It's not going to be easy going up against one of the top dogs in the challenger stage, especially you don't have a coach behind.